Tuesday, June 20th, 2023. Uh, Mrs. Campos, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Atwood is absent. Ms. Ballard is absent. Mrs. Rerica? Here. Present. Mr. Taylor? Present. Mrs. Cole? Present. Okay, if you would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, item three, we have the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt? All motion to adopt. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, Mrs. Camphouse? Mrs. Rerica? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mrs. Cole? Yes. All right, with the adoption approved, we will move on to item four. These are our discussion items. And uh, 4.01, we have an update with our athletic director, Mr. Chuck Richardson. So I will turn the floor over to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, always the first thing. No, her name first. Good evening, <laughs> Superintendent Ronan, Treasurer Camphouse, and members of the Board of Education. Just wanted to uh, provide you all with an update on the athletics year in review. Ms. Cole out of this literature, but it's always good to have it twice. Thank you, Mrs. Cole, for attending our end of the year meeting. Of course. There you are. So I have about, oh man, 10 or so slides just detailing um, the success that we had in the department this past school year and some pictures to accompany that information. So um, if Ms. Chester can go ahead and click the first slide for me, please. Uh, the first slide is student athlete participation data. That's why we're here. I guess that's why I'm here. Um, we want to make sure that our student athletes in the district are participating or our students are participating in the district. So uh, we had 23 four-year varsity letter winners. Um, and then this is a big one. I know 2020 did put a damper on the athletics participation, but from last year to this year, we see a 22% increase in athletic participation. So we have student athletes that are participating in our grades 7 through 12. So that's a number that we would like to see. So that's training help. Um, of our thousand or so students that are grade seven through twelve, three hundred eight of them. Mr. Richardson, yes, could you hold on just a second? Could sure. you use that microphone right sure. there? Can we? Oh. Thank you. I got a text. Sorry. All right, it's all good. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. They can hear you. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, okay. All right. So we had um, three hundred eighty those participated. So that's about a. Mm, 38 percent of the students that we have in the district so that's that's an encouraging number to see and then one thing i'm always preaching is our student athletes participate in more than one sport so we had 126 of those play two or more sports and we had 38 of them play three or more sports so these numbers are encouraging as we go into the 2023 2024 school year um that's something that uh treasurer camp house and i speak about all the time is the student athlete participation so we do have kids participating in sports um and i will talk about these pictures because i think they are pretty cool in their own right so this is at the Lender Tennis uh, Facility. Um, this is the sexual tennis tournament. This is our boys tennis team uh, with Coach Don Atterbury. Um, all of our teams were full of character and uh, colorful students, uh, but these guys were fun um, with the matches that I attended this year. And Coach Atterbury, if you know her, she's always fun. Um, she does not mince words if you have conversations with her. So um, it's always good to see uh, our kids have fun with their coaches. Okay, so um, records are always made to be broken. So uh, this gentleman right here is uh, Mr. Dylan Horsley. And uh, this year he had 16 quarterback sacks in, in the season. Um, seven and a half of those came in one game. And this actually this is his game here uh, against CCPA. Uh, in the last two years, actually, since she's been a student athlete at Norwood, she breaks a record every year. I was worried that she wasn't going to break one this year, but she broke one. And that's uh, swimmer Abby Edmond. So this year she broke her own 50-meter freestyle record uh, in 28.14 seconds. Um, and then this year, this was a surprise to all of us. Um, Sydney Williams played softball for the past three years um this year she made a pivot and she started to run track so everyone always said that sydney was fast but sydney is really fast so this year she uh broke two individual records and then she also uh broke a record um in a relay race so um uh, we got more uh to come with sydney here um in the next couple of slides but you know she broke some long-standing records that were here at norwood and had sydney run track you know two maybe three years she might have broke more records and may have been a state qualifier, but we talk more about Sydney a little bit. All right. So some of our conference awards, um, I'm going to go to the very bottom. The conference award that I'm most impressed with 
was the 76 Miami Valley Conference, um, all academic team members. So that are student athletes that have a 3.5 GPA or above at the high school level. So we had 76 of those throughout our three seasons. So I'll go back to the top. Um, the future is something that we always talk about as well, and it's very bright here at Norwood. So our B team, a seventh grade, boys and girls uh, basketball, were runners up in the MVC tournament. And then sportsmanship is something that we are always that we always preach and we're big on too. So our sportsmanship award winners were Dylan Horsley, Jeremy Cox, and Soren Stout. Um, our soccer programs have been very strong uh, over the past few years. So our women's soccer team has won their fourth program, um, fourth Miami Valley Conference championship in a row. Wrestling has won five in a row, uh, middle school and high school. And actually, I got a typo there. It's actually five in a row. We thought it was four, but it was cleared up in our all coaches meeting that five Miami Valley Conference middle school championships in a row. So these young men who wrestle in middle school go have success with Coach Coach, and we see what that success is going to in the high school level. Uh, we have 17 first team all conference members or uh, champions, 22 second all conference team runners or uh, runners up, and then 22. Um, Honorable mention or third team uh, all conference. And then, uh, of course, that uh, 76 um, our academic team members. And then something we've been really encouraging our coaches to do. Um, the MVC has a uh, uh, Miami Valley Conference League, uh, Athlete of the Week. And we encourage our uh, coaches to nominate their student athletes every week. So throughout the course of the year, we had 69 of those. And last year, we had 44. So that number went up as well. So um, I'm glad our coaches are nominating their student athletes for those things that they do well on and off the field. I got plenty more to go. Okay, so going back to our Miami Valley Conference Awards, um, Defensive Player of the Year was uh, Dylan Horsley. Uh, our girls uh, soccer player was um, – MVC soccer player was uh, Laney Murphy. And Laney's just a sophomore. So um, at our spring – I'm sorry, at our fall awards night, Laney cleaned up and it was well-deserved. And, again, she's only a sophomore. So I am excited to see what happens in the next two years as she uh, continues her academic athletic career here at Norwood. Uh, Derek also won the coach of the year for the fifth year in a row and we had a co-player of the year and another underclassman that was uh, Ava Winchester not Allie Winchester but Ava Winchester we hear the uh, Allie all the time but Ava is the softball player and she won the uh, player of the year and we talked about this and we put this on our social media pages too Ava hit her batting average this year was 781 and I might be wrong on a, on a, a number here or there but 781 so you do some quick math that's four out of the five times she came to the plate she made a hit or she got a hit that's pretty impressive mm -hmm. so she's pretty much uh, uh she's un un unable to be out so she <laughs> makes the base all the time uh hitting almost 800 is unworldly all right and then we have Murphy Peter who was the uh the baseball pitcher of the year so there is Lainey Murphy our um girls MVC Player of the Year. Okay, so our Ohio High School Athletic Association Awards. Um, we had two student athletes who made uh, all state teams. Dylan Horsley uh, led, us, led us off in the fall sports season uh, as a football player. And then we had two Division Three Southwest District players, and that was basketball players. That was Mason Winchester and his sister uh, Ava. And then also uh, we had a Division Three. Uh, district semifinalist that was girls basketball that's the second time in two years that that has happened uh we had our bo boys bowling team qualified for uh, division two um the southwest district and then mason winchester was also named to uh, one of the all ohio teams that's one of the best players in the state and then also we had um district qualifiers uh riley carmen and ainsley Braden qualified for the district and this is uh riley here with his coach coach uh, nathan hill and this is Riley at the uh, his practice for the state meet. So Riley also qualified for the uh, Division Three Bowling State Championships, which is a cool honor. Okay, so more Ohio High School Athletic Association awards. Um, make sure I wrote something right. Excuse me. All right. So Wyatt Hinton, as you see here on the podium, uh, he uh, finished sixth overall in the state. And also Wyatt won the Division uh, Three District Championship in his weight class. Um, Wyatt also uh, was accompanied by um, some teammates uh, as far as the Southwest District goes, and that was Jeremy Cox, Wyatt Hinton, uh, Tristan Howard, Devin Isaac, Mason Kelsch, and uh, Murphy Peter, and Nate Wall. So these young men qualify for the district meet. Um, and then, uh, in our picture before, that was Riley Carmen, who uh, qualified as a bowler. And then we had two state qualifiers. That was uh, Wyatt Hinton at 132 pounds and then 
Jeremy Cox uh, at 138 pounds was an alternate. So he did get a chance to go to Columbus. Unfortunately, um, he did not get to wrestle. But again, just to make it as an alternate, to make it to Columbus is, a, is an honor. So uh, Wyatt placed. So we are proud uh, for Wyatt on that accomplishment there. Okay, so going back to Sydney Williams, uh, you know, with Sydney Williams and her untapped speed or untapped potential, uh, she won the Miami Valley Conference uh, this year in the 100 meter dash. And then she also uh, qualified for the 100 meter dash um, in, in the uh, Ohio High School Athletic Association District 2 track, track and field meet. Uh, her teammates and her, um, they just missed qualifying for the regional meet. Um, in the four by 100 meter relay, and then Sydney just missed going to Columbus as a state qualifier in the uh, the regional um, in the regional meet. So and that's what she ran at uh, that pup that that um, personal best of uh, 12.95 seconds. All right, I think this picture is pretty cool because these I mean they look they look I don't know I just love it. So um, we not, might need to put this one on our website. I just love this picture a lot. So um, again, here's another. Um, picture of these young ladies and uh, some of their accomplishments as well um, what they did so we've already spoke about those okay so coaches publications um, coaches association of public so coaches association of publication awards um, you we're gonna hear this name a lot or we've heard this name a lot that was Dylan Horsley was the uh, the tri tri-state football player of the week nominee uh, for the week that he had the seven and a half sacks um, also, all Southwest nominees were Dylan Horsley uh, and Landon Taylor. And we have four uh, football players who made Division Five all Southwest District. That was Dylan Horsley, Jamel Jackson, Landon Taylor, and Jeremy Sanders. Uh, Lanny Murphy made first team all district in her coach, the Soccer Coaches Association. And we had three student athletes on the uh, varsity volleyball team who made all district um, as uh, all district academic honors. That was Caroline Inslee, Bella McNamara, and uh, Sydney Williams. Um, Dylan Horsley also made uh, first team uh, Division Four and Division Five of the Southwest Coaches Association, and we also have four Cincinnati Enquirer of the Week nominees. That was Mason Gabbert, Wyatt Hinton, Devin Isaac, and Kylie Jones. All right, this is our wrestling team on senior night. Um, so more of uh, those publication awards. We had two uh, Cincinnati Enquirers, uh, Cincinnati Cincinnati Enquirer, excuse me, um, athletes of the week. That was Wyatt Hinton. Uh, Kylie Jones and Mason Winchester. I'm sorry, that was three. Uh, we had one uh, team that won the uh, Cincinnati Enquirer Team of the Week. That was Varsity Softball. And we had our fall All-Stars. That was Dylan Horsley, Jamel Jackson, Jeremy Sanders, and uh, Landon Taylor. And our winner All-Stars were Jeremy Cox, Wyatt Hinton, Tristan Howard, Devin Isaac, Kylie Jones, Mason Kelsch, Murphy Peter, Nate Wall, and uh, Mason Winchester. And then we also had um, two student athletes who played in their coaches association all-star game. That was Mason Gabbard and Mason Winchester. All right. It's always good to beat uh, that team from Hackberry, also known as uh, Purcell Marion. As we see here is the golden pen. So the golden pen came back home uh, to Norwood this year. And we're pretty proud of that. And then our girls basketball team for the second year in a row, won the Cincinnati crossover classic uh, Christmas time tournament that's held over at St. Bernard. All right. So the goal is to get our student athletes um, to play at the next level. And we see these two young men here um, at their signing day ceremony. That's Jamel Jackson and Landon Taylor. Uh, they are going to be attending Wittenberg University here uh, this fall or within the next mm, month or so. Uh, camp will be starting. So we're pretty excited about that. So, um, again, there's their picture from signing day. All right. So. Our most outstanding student athletes are Sydney Williams and Mason Winchester. Some names that we've heard quite a bit. So there's um there's there from um the senior signing day, and that's what we name our student athlete of the year. All right, so that's pretty much all I have. Uh, you know, it was an awesome school year, um, as we seen and as we here have here in our packet uh, that you can see. Uh, we have student athletes who are pretty much flourishing um, in what they do. So it's, it's, I'm proud to be their director of athletics, and I'm proud to be a part of the community and see the, um, the great things that they are doing. Um, before I do the part this evening, um, last week I did have the, uh, the privilege of teaching um, other athletic directors and some peer-led um, leadership training classes um, up in Columbus at the Ohio State uh, High School Athletic Association building, which was pretty cool. Um, so 
had some I had a ball with that, but I had a chance to go to my alma mater and uh, do some shadowing there and meet with a couple of people. So I met with the associate athletic director of athletics of the Buckeye Club and a couple other uh, development projects that he does. And then also I met with uh, Coach Ryan Day's uh, chief of staff. Uh, so that was pretty cool. So that's pretty much Ryan Day's number two. Um, so. In those lines of work, or I guess with my line of work, things are quite similar. So I guess I got the chance to look at it from the fundraising aspect and the operations aspect of it, too. Um, now, granted, Ohio State football is one sport, but, you know, the 23 sports that we have here, you know, it all pretty much serves its purpose with budgeting, uh, scheduling, uh, things of that nature. And uh, what, one of my main takeaways is I asked them, how do we keep people motivated? How do they keep their coaches motivated? Um, you know, it's just more so just driving the culture. So, you know, moving forward. In our coaches meeting, um, you know, this is year three. So every year I have a message for our coaches. Uh, year one uh, was pretty much, and that's community thing. You know, we you went with people. Um, that's Woody Hayes' quote. And it's, you know, pretty much speaks for itself. Year two, we didn't hit it how we wanted to. But, you know, there's still opportunities to get better. That's going from good to great. So year one was good. Um, we're trying to go from good to great. We're still working there. And uh, more so, you know, now we're having our coaches being challenged. And I said, I need more. So, you know, that's one thing that we're trying to do is just build our culture and grow our culture here in the uh, athletic department. So, you know, if coaches get a different side of me this year. It's just more so me pushing them. And, you know, we're pushing each other to be better for our community, for our student athletes. So, again, you know, we need more. Um, and then an Urban Meyerism that I picked up on again is going from A to B and four to six. Uh, so four to six A to B. So long and short of it, don't worry about what anybody else is doing in your play. So you know a play lasts for four to six seconds. So worry about what you have to do for your four to six seconds and go hard as you can from A to B. So again, that's things that we're trying to do in our athletic department as we grow our culture. I don't care what anybody else does. Do what you need to do in your lane in your four to six seconds. Go hard as you can. So that's the message I want to steal to our coaches uh, from top to bottom, from head coaches to assistant coaches. And it's a message I want to uh, convey to our student athletes, too. So this year, you know, we're going to go. You know, I want more. And then we're going to go from uh, four to six to eight, or A to B to four to six. So that's all I got. Did I talk a lot? Your positivity <laughs> is contagious. I love it. And I really liked how fast you went. That's right. <laughs> like we're going to have a problem with 20 slides of kids achieving stuff at the state hey, regional level. level. Yeah. Like, oh, darn. Oh, sorry. We don't have only one slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Right. It's great to see our kids at that level performing consistently at that level. It really is. Yeah. It really is. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Richardson? You get a break this summer at all? <laughs> Slightly. Okay. Slightly. I got a passport story to tell you another time. <sighs> okay. But it you're can't. Going out, you're going to another country? Yes. I was supposed to be there two weeks ago. Oh. oh. I tell you. I, I tell y'all that. <laughs> I tell y'all that at the mound one night. I tell you that. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. No problem. Thank That's you, sure. President Cole. All right. Uh, Moving on in our agenda, uh, item five, this is personnel, and I will turn it over to Superintendent Ronan. Ah, thank you, Madam President. Number one, uh, this our new personnel for this year, and I'm so excited. We have hired Caitlin Leach to be the science teacher at Norwood High School. She is the 2017 salutatorian graduated she taught for uh, two years in West Claremont and when she saw we had an opening she came and interviewed we hired her on the spot and she goes I'm gonna go down the street and tell my parents so <laughs> we are just delighted to have her and we also want to welcome Allison Hadley she is um, gonna be a kindergarten teacher in our Montessori program number two is a renewal of Mr. Richardson's contract Number three is Coach Money. He is moving to the middle school uh, intervention specialist slot because we have had a resignation there. Number four are some stipends, as you can see, for the basketball tournaments. Five is summer school and kindergarten camp for our summer programming. Also, uh, Mrs. Ferguson and I am six. She is our coordinator for Avenues this summer. Number 17 is a leave of absence for Brittany. And um, number eight is just a, a correction. We classified uh, Mrs. Friend in as the wrong category. So we want to make sure we get her, uh, her pay corrected. And then number nine, we are hiring lots of coaches, as you can see, for fall. So Chuck's been busy doing that. 
Also under number nine, our Summer Blast camp staff, where Mrs. Ferguson has hired lots of uh, site staff to run the program. I am very excited that um, three of the young people in there are Brian Hernandez, Cheyenne Redman, and Jamel Jackson. Mrs. Ferguson was able to talk them into doing the summer program, helping her out this summer before they all head off to college in the fall. So that was great that our students are helping younger students and giving back. And I believe that that is the end of the list, and that is the end of my report. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ronan. Um, moving on, item six, this is our education committee, and I will turn it over to Mrs. Rerica. Okay. Our first is our list of graduates. Julie, you don't want me to. <laughs> There's a lot of them, and they're great. And we saw them at graduation, and it was great. Uh, number six is our student handbook. Y'all want to talk about this? Uh, we or, cert it certainly can. There haven't been a lot of changes since last year. Probably the biggest change is we um, moved them into Google Docs. So if you want to do a revision, they're easier to go back and change. They had been in a publisher program, which is kind of hard to make changes. So we're hoping that you'll review them between tonight and next week. And if there's anything you see that's an issue, let us know. We've got the elementary, the middle, the high school, and the preschool handbook ready to go. And you heard uh, Chuck say that he will have the athletic one either in for next Thursday or in July because we're updating that. I'm sure most of the items that we picked last year are pretty consistent uh, yes update of dates the calendar and any staff name, exactly contact information mm -hmm. that's pretty much it we have not made any significant change we but you know when you translate or move it from one program to another we're Some always afraid we may yeah we may or... have made a little error but no no significant changes at all who wants to talk about dress code it is <laughs> Did we update that again? That has no. Oh, no, that nothing's has not. changed. That has but, not changed. Um, we okay. can talk about if we'd like to change things. I mean, well, that's we, what we do at these meetings, right? Because I think we had updated it to allow more flexibility and the teacher's ability to use better judgment versus like, oh, you're wearing a tank top. Well, the basketball players wear tank tops too, so I'm not going to have a problem if a girl wears a tank top because a basketball yeah. player wears a tank top. For sure, it's page 25. If you want to check it, it's really involved. And it could be way simpler. There are schools that do inclusive dress codes, and they are like so simple. They're just like, here's the parts of the body that need to be covered. Is it just the? High and school? that's pretty much all it says. Is it only under the high school one, or is I'm looking the at the high school one. No, I'm saying page 25. Is that? Oh, yeah, the high it's school the high. School the high school, one. middle school are, are the same. Are that we they kept good? them consistent. So I don't have to go and look at yeah, the other they're ones. both the same. So if you. Yeah. Yeah. Our, I know. I had to restart. I'm not. I'm having some issues with my computer. Yeah, mine was going slow too. I finally just got it to open. Yeah. Um, I'm having some issues. Well, so I think as in years past, we've taken this time between the committee meeting and the board meeting to review the the handbooks so we can do that and then if we have issues we would like to discuss i think that's definitely good and if you guys could look at the dress code and start thinking about that because i definitely want to talk about it yeah was, was the concern the difference between we the crop top situation we're dealing it was with? it was inspired to me by the crop top situation and my my thoughts on that one are that when something becomes in style, like normally, like if we said, oh, no midriffs, it would like not really even be a big deal. But then when that thing comes in style and they become extremely common, I mean, you even saw it in Chuck's picture, midriff right there, closest person to us. And then the next person also wearing one. Um, I wear them. Yeah, right, and I bought them actually on accident. I don't like them, but I bought them on accident because they're that prolific. And then I'm like, well, I really like this shirt. I don't want, well, and I ordered it, and I don't want to return it. So we wear it. Um, but so also when something becomes so popular, it becomes hard for caregivers and parents to not buy the item. Like I said, I've even bought it on accident. 
Um, and kids want to be in style. And you're um, right about a style. In the 80s, guys wore midriff shirts. That's the true. football players wore they did. the short shorts and the midriff shirts. And that was the style for men in the 80s. Like, right? You, it goes through phases. And I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it was but... an unfortunate phase, but it was <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and, and I'm looking at our, um, thing and it just seems like, wow, it's just so much. And, uh, just, just for starters. Okay. So the very first part, it says the board of education policy starts school dress code, blah, blah, blah. So the last sentence in that any form of dress or grooming, which attracts undue attention, prompting a disruption of the learning environment is unacceptable. On one hand, I'm like, of course, that sounds logical. And on the other hand, I'm like, is this why girls are constantly getting pulled out? And 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 it's not just us. This is this is a societal thing. I'm not saying Norwood's special. We're not. This is all over. That, and they're like, oh, you're disrupting the learning environment. Uh, you need to, and they get pulled out, and their parents get called, and blah blah blah. And I feel like. We're disrupting their learning that, or if they're wearing a crop top, unless <laughs> like um, that, no one else is even noticing. Or if some other person does, that's their behavior problem, not hers. So I don't know that that particular sentence struck me. Um, I hadn't gotten much farther. Um, oh, and then. Students representing their school, therefore, a neat appearance reflects the quality of the school, wearing inappropriate, blah, 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 blah. That whole thing felt to me like the 1950s. I was like, are we telling our kids they have to dress like they're going to church? I don't know. I think that dress and grooming means, like, please bathe. Um, and <laughs> Right, and I have a child who would tell teenagers you there's a bunch who need of kids deodorant. Who proper grooming skills, things like that. Those those are what we mean because that could disrupt performance of a lot of kids. It could also result in some really bad bullying situations from mean kids because maybe that kid needs help or maybe they have a medical need. Do we need it in the dress code? Because I think kids do that. Either they do it or don't do it regardless. I know my kid can tell you there were many a child she had to sit next to who did not follow that rule. So obviously they're not reading it. Right. Um, Do you have some examples that you could bring in maybe at the next oh, yeah. meeting or send to us to review that might be more on lines with what you're thinking? That yes. would be more helpful than us That's just tossing out some ideas of looking sentences. Looking up right before meeting today. I think that, I, I think that in general, you know, I don't see anything here alarming to me. I mean, as, as much as, you know, this this is our kids' school, but this is also a place of business. We have, you know, we have people that come here for their jobs every day, and they are required to dress a certain way. So I don't think it's unrealistic to have guidelines for the students to follow as well. It, it's it's a mutual respect thing. Um, I think I don't I don't know to what extent we need to or want to sit here and and nitpick certain things, but. Um, you know, in these words, but I mean, just glancing through this, I mean, this to me seems normal. You know what I mean? I don't feel like there's anything on this list that's out of the ordinary for any dress code. I don't personally um, have a problem with this. I think that, you know, I, I'm aware we had some issues at the high school, um, which is kind of prompting the discussion around this uh, for this year. But, um, you know, I don't I don't personally have a problem with this. I think this is teaching, you know, kids we need to be respectful. Once once our students graduate and move on and are employed somewhere, they're going to have to wear a certain type of clothing to work. They're going to, you know, wherever they work, they're going to have expectations of what they're wearing. I don't I don't feel that this is unreasonable. I guess for me, like like I said, seeing a tank top, no muscle shirts or tank tops are permitted. I have absolutely no problem with someone wearing a tank top, especially if a student's not doing anything except sitting in their classroom. To me, mm -hmm. that is not an issue if they're wearing a tank top because the same exact classroom, like I said, could have a basketball player wearing their jersey, which is a tank top, and not get 
in any trouble whatsoever. And it's usually because it's a male student in a tank top. So if that girl were wearing a basketball jersey, technically they're breaking the rule. If that male student is wearing a jersey, technically they're breaking that rule. But we allow that to happen, but not others. So if you're going to say no strapless, backless, or halter tops, okay, that gives me an idea. You can't just mm -hmm. come in. Like, I, I have this covered. But, for example, I couldn't mm -hmm. just wear this in the building mm -hmm. without a cover on. I'm wearing a cover. I'm perfectly fine. But if I'm wearing a tank top, just like anybody's jersey, I think, personally, I would say that should be irrelevant. Because it doesn't any, disrupt the classroom. I don't think any of the basketball jerseys are tank top anymore. Yeah, I well, think I'm just using it as an I mean, example. Saying, the, that's I mean, a thing you would practice in. It's an example of a thing you would wear, and that would be permissible in a school because it's a it's a uniform type jersey. But as an example, nobody's going to say anything if they're wearing a regular tank top. So why is it in here? Because then it gives the well, it's in the it's in the dress code. You can't wear a tank top. Well, that kid wore a tank top yesterday, and that kid wore a tank top this morning, and that. And I then it becomes, oh, it's on. It's about me. Now that kid feels singled out in that classroom. I think there's a couple of things going on here. I think that about the tank top, you know, the very next thing is all undergarments must be covered. So I think for a young lady that's wearing a bra, you know, you might see her strap or something like that if right. it's that type of a tank top. And I've seen language in the past where they kind of define like the width of the, um, of the, what am I trying to say? The the piece up here, okay. you know, if the you strap, strap. yeah, the strap. See, that would be the same thing as no strapless, backless, or halter pop pop with spaghetti strap. Yeah, so it's kind so of to like to me, it's like we have it in there twice. Twice, almost. you're saying if yeah. that must be covered, then technically a tank top. Yeah, because there are sleeves it. like the bat. You know, a basketball jersey is is wider. wider, wider strap, and there are certainly very classy, elegant tops that ladies can wear that are the same way. Yep. Um. So I think that that. That that, um... if anything, I would say at least leave in, you know, the strapless, backless, that line. But I would remove the tank top thing because, like you said, blouses are cut that way, jerseys are sometimes cut, cut that, that way. way, things like that. It's just an irrelevant and redundant line. That okay, we'll take matter. out we'll take out the whole I the just tank top. I think the whole thing could become a lot simpler. And um, again, I well, would, I'll show I would you need guys. some examples. I'll bring the things. Yeah. Um, but I would say it's all that one. It's already in there, so yeah. we don't need to then exclude tank tops because then you run the risk of somebody nitpicking a student. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and, so obviously saying things can't look like weapons. You can't have a, you know, a knuckled bracelet that you could then use. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. these things make sense. Yeah, I get that. yeah. Things Most that cause of, harm. Yeah, are this not makes allowed. sense. No chains, no stuff like that. Totally on board. Yeah, but. So we're taking out a tank top. We will remove that. Now, the midriff has been in there for years, but now the question is, is that the same as the crop tops, which now are in fashion? A crop so anything we just that shows it. this this region, so from like the top of the pant to here. So anything that shows mid-stomach is considered a midriff or crop top. So this, you might not need to think about like strike this line, not that line, da 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 When I show you the ones that are all-inclusive, they're just like, here are the body parts that need to be covered. And then it actually like, lists the body parts. Yep. Oh. But it's not very long. Okay. Like you have to wear shoes. You have to have something going over your shoulders. You must have your torso covered. Oh, okay. That's how they worded it. Okay, that's what I was <laughs> yeah. concerned about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, We're a bandolier. Like, it's it's like super simple. You might be like, wow, this is so simple. I totally want this instead of all this. Because, like, who do you think reads this? Like, this kind of goes on and on and on. Um, and, and then, of course, they say things like no hate language or weapons and stuff like that. And then, like, that's it. Yeah, if you, if you want to so bring an example for us to read, I'd be happy to look at it. And my biggest thing is I want to give teachers and administration the power to not feel that they need to be looking for the violations and disrupting that person's learning experience because you have a violation boom I'm like no they were just sitting there doing their work can they just not be disrupted well i, I um, think the i think the point though is we have a dress code we established that this is the dress code um the students know that it's expected that they follow it and i don't think it turns into somebody nitpicking every single day and 
And I heard a lot from my kids this year. Yeah, some some of the feedback that came back felt targeted. Some of it felt very nitpicky over mm -hmm. little things, especially when it was like they just did it mm -hmm. and they just did it and they just did it. So why why me today? So consistency. They're, right. Right. It's hard to be consistent because some mm -hmm. teachers maybe care more than others about. I don't care if you wear a tank top. Mm -hmm. Are you paying attention in class? That's what I care about. Well, Another I'm sure might care more. Oh, you're not following dress code. Well, they didn't care in first through third bell. Why do they care in fourth bell? Yeah. Or what? I'm sure that there will be talks and meetings over the summer about some yeah. of these things. And I'm sure that consistency in many different can, areas will be touched upon. If we can make that upon. more streamlined. If yeah. there's an example of a district yeah. who's doing it well with having it streamlined, you know, maybe we could take a look at that and it could benefit yeah. us to have mm -hmm. less, sometimes yeah. less is more, mm -hmm. you know. Right, and then more people will read it. If, if there's less there, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I read that thing. This, even I'm like, whoa, words, a lot of them. Oh, geez. Mm -hmm. mm, focus. <gasps> yeah. So, <laughs> and then the handbook is, you know, it's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, anyways, that was my big deal today. We can, does anybody else have any, I'll move on to the next thingy and we can talk more at the next meeting. Yeah, it might be helpful if you email us like before the meeting oh, next yeah. week so we can have time to look at it before the meeting. I will write myself that note. Yeah. This is Alice's homework. Email the inclusive dress codes to board. All right. The next thing is we have a textbook adoption. I presume Christina will tell us about them. So um, it's time to adopt something new We're in the middle of piloting for mathematics and different grade levels and different content next year. But pre calculus was outdated and needed a bump up. So um, we are doing a new adoption for pre calculus. And most of the adoptions moving forward will be a six year adoption. So this will be a six year adoption. Um, and it's we just need a small amount. There aren't too many kids slated to be a part of this. Um, course next year, so it's just a like a sixty-four hundred dollar cost to these pre-calculus books, both um, physical textbooks and online resources for the students, and of course teachers' additions to support that work as well. Are they as exciting as the history books we heard about? <laughs> well, history is pretty exciting, but if you yes. ask a math teacher, the answer is yes. yes. <laughs> Do they change languages? <laughs> no. Oh, Read yeah. to you. In Spanish, but no. Yeah, no. History, they will do Spanish? They, they will um, do some language work. There's not as much um, meat there in terms of the narrative part, like social studies, but um, they will they will certainly add to our mathematics department. Can I tell you, if the books had changed to uh, German, my uh, exchange student would have really appreciated that. She had such a hard time with math, and she's like, I have to translate everything he's saying and then try to do math. <laughs> so that would have been good for her. Christina, I just got a text that your microphone was not on. Uh, okay. So. Okay, so I'm happy to recommend that we adopt pre-calculus. We'll go back a little bit. Um, it's for our a new, an updated version for our pre-calculus textbook. Um, it's a six-year adoption. There will be both to a physical textbook and online resources for students and for the staff members that are providing the instruction. And the cost of this adoption is a small price, um, $6,400. Okay, and then next we have a memorandum of understanding with the HCESC Center for Early Learning Programs. Um, this is with Head Start. Um, yes, those are the three the Head same, Start programs in Norwood. Right, it's the same same that we, we, t we intend to be there and yes. do our program. Awesome. And that's all I have. Okay. I do have a question going oh. back to the handbook. I just saw something okay. I'd like to ask about. Um, I noticed it under ECD, under the Electronic Communication Device section, but I'm sure it's in other sections. 
um, specifically saying, uh, you know, the ECD will be returned after extended periods eventually to a parent only. Um, I would request that the district remove the use of the word parent alone. We have a lot of foster kids. We have kids, maybe that's not the parent, but guardian. guardian. I think we need to be mindful of the word choices that we're using. Um, so if we want to include, you know, parent, guardian, or, you know, supervising adult, whatever we change that to, we need to be inclusive and mindful that not all kids have a mom or dad. Uh, and that's something that can really hit home. Okay. And we need to be mindful of it as a district. So wherever it says parent, parent slash guardian, you know, responsible we'll adult, that. whatever. Um, also with the electronic communication section, it says, you know, the, the device will be powered off between 835 and 320. Most kids are off school by 230. So I think even with that alone, it's an unrealistic expectation of kids in this day and age to have their devices off completely. Um, I do think that it is a restriction for the teachers to make sure it's not being used in classrooms and not being taken advantage of. Um, but hey, to say that it needs to be, it's, the, it's right it. after what we were looking at. The internet policy is on page 28, 29. It kind of, or it overlaps a little, the, the spacing is weird. Um, so that might be a, a formatting issue okay. with the handbook. Some of the pages Page are kind of overlapping. 29, okay. Um, but we might want to look at the electronic communication and just, you know, responsibly using your phones. Because you know the kids are using their phones anyway. Uh, if they're not in class, if they're at lunch, you know, you know what's, what's actually the point of that policy? And is, is that really the most effective way? If it's in classroom, obviously a teacher has control over, are you behaving with it? Did I tell you to get it out because I want you to look up some information? My kids are constantly asked to get their phone out and do the things right. or call me or something. I, I just like, think that our policy needs to be reflective of how our classrooms okay. utilize electronic devices. And sometimes they do ask students to look up information on their phones. Um, you know, and if another teacher walks by and says, hey, you're not supposed to be on that. Well, so-and-so told me to. Again, it just creates an issue where one may not really need to exist. Um, so we might want to review that okay. that section. It is the day and age of technology, and we have to embrace that as much as the negatives come with it, too. <laughs> okay. So I've got the unless teacher directed with the usage. The hours, I think they put the elementary hours. We should probably change that to the middle school, high school hours. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm and in the high school the one now. parent so, yeah. guardian all the way through. Or right. even if it just says any time during school, school hours, school hours just, yeah. just say school hours, um, unless otherwise directed by a teacher. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and like I said, changing that parent language to be more inclusive. That's all I have for right now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So Sorry we'll spend, yeah, we'll spend some time um, before next week. Everybody can look through this. Yeah. And, okay. All right. So moving on uh, to item seven, we have policy committee. I don't see any listed here. No. Nope. No policies again? Okay. Nope. Easy month on that. All right. Um, number eight, we have building and grounds. I don't see anything listed there. We so, already approved everything from for the summer request, yep. right? So then, yeah, we should be good. Nothing I knew there new. was stuff for summer. Nothing new coming in. And then, um, so number nine, this is our finance committee, and I will turn it over to our treasurer, Mrs. Campos. Thank you, Madam President. The state biennial budget bill has been passed out of the Senate and House with opposing details. So it is headed to the conference committee for resolution. It is due by June 30th, or state finances will shut down. However, this has only happened once since I've been a treasurer, so I am sure they'll have everything cleaned up and ready to go by June 30th, hopefully so. <laughs> On the agenda 9.01, monthly financials, the CFO report, and construction change order listings are attached for your review. 9.02, final appropriations for fiscal year 23. These will probably be modified again before next week's approval. 9.03, temporary appropriations. In order for us to conduct financial business starting July 1, we need to approve temporary appropriations in June. 9.04, certificate of estimated resources. 
The final statement of estimated resources, also comparing revenues and cash balances to appropriations for the county auditor's review and oversight. Uh, that is not yet attached because that will change again before next week's approval also. 9.05 transfers and advances. Our annual transfers from the general fund to associated funds. The PI fund is getting a large sum in order to provide funding for our future construction, which includes both Shea Stadium updates and the beautification project. Our severance accounts need needs more funding as we've had several retirements this year. The athletic account has also had um, several large expenditures and needs a transfer to cover. Mr. Mr. Richardson is working to increase athletic revenues, but that does take time. I will say that this transfer is less than last year's transfer, so uh, we are seeing positive results. It just takes time. 9.06 property vehicle and liability insurance renewal. Our quotes from various vendors have increased due to our water intrusion claim that ruined the high school gym floor. We are assisting insurance claim specialists to subrogate this claim so that it rests on the proper vendor, not the school district. Once that is finished, we will see some relief on the insurance premium increases. 9.07 gap and CIFA financial um, preparation. A five year limiting contract to Plattenburg to provide fiscal services to the district, including our financial report and our schedule of federal awards. 9.08 special education agreements for the fiscal year 24. The following contracts for special education include uh, education services include uh, Medicare will provide special education transportation to the selected vendor um, that is providing IEP services. Warren County ESC and ABS will be the vendors actually providing IEP services next year. There'll be two of them anyway. I'm sure we'll have more. 9.09 .09, fiscal year grants. To accept the early allocations, create the funds and set appropriations for the federal funds listed on the agenda. Uh, this is a partial list, not the whole list, but this is about $1.6 million in federal funding to provide additional services to students beside what our local and state shares of funding can provide. 9.10, notice to proceed. This document allows the Williams and Norwood roof projects to start. Uh, it's an official notice to the vendor telling them that they have, a, um, they've been approved to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yay. 9.11, high school roof change order. Uh, this is actually three change orders, all dealing with the high school roof uh, project due to unexpected conditions when um, they started removing the old roof. The first part of this change order is additional labor costs for removing the excess insulation and other unexpected materials. The second part was mostly equipment rental needed for the excess debris removal, including dumpster costs. The third was for 22 additional drains, four additional curbs, and the labor to raise the three large skylights to the minimum height required for the new roof. This change order cost has been decreased about 15% from the original amount at our architects and John Peters insistence. The change order includes pictures, um, the attachment includes pictures where you will see the excess amount of insulation that hampered the replacement of the new roof. 9.10, payment in lieu of transportation. This is our annual approval of payment in lieu of um, dollars for students attending private or charter schools per transportation mandates set by law and the Ohio Department of Education. 9.13, Resolution to declare transportation impractical. This resolution is required per new mandates in transportation law and will be updated every time a student or their family requests transportation to a private or charter school. So this will probably be on um, our agenda, I would think maybe even once a month. I have a question about language in that resolution under number five. I, I think a word is missing, I'm oh. not sure. It just says Norwood City Schools is a walking district and therefore hasn't the ability to transport students, hasn't needed, hasn't, hasn't what, hasn't 
I'm assuming have we haven't needed the ability or uh, need needed to transport students, but I think the wording on number five. Okay, I will looks, fix that. Just take a look at that one. We just don't have the ability to transport because we don't have a bus There's department. Four. Yeah, but I will work on that. Yeah, whatever the language is, it's just yeah. a weird sentence. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for catching that. Um, 9.14 security project at the high school to approve the additional cost for labor for further security protections at the high school. This is for $44,439. Um, Finally, 9.15 to create an unclaimed funds account. As students graduate, sometimes we are left with a positive balance in their lunch account. This unclaimed funds account will hold these funds until the parent requests a refund or until the seven year period is up and we can transfer those funds to the general fund. This is a small amount of money this year. I think it was about $700. So, um, but it'll put it in a separate fund and it'll make it cleaner for us to track uh, and refund. So okay. that's why we're doing that. If we ever end up with funds, like for since it's lunchroom money, um, if we ever end up short, could we use that to help pay down balances for students who might be short? We have a lot of programs already for that. Okay. Yeah, we've, we've had some really nice donations. And remember, all this goes through Milford now. So they're, mm -hmm. uh, they're handling it. it. We don't have to do it. But, okay. um, but we have some really nice donations coming in to pay for um, the little bit of charges that do get charged. Since we're school-wide, um, free and reduced, mm -hmm. um, the charges are only for extra things, not for their meals. Okay. Is there any questions on finance? Busy summer. Okay. As always. <laughs> she made up for the sections we didn't have. Right? I know. <laughs> with all 9. the, the fights. <laughs> all right. Anything else for Mrs. Campos? Okay. So, item 10, we have executive session uh, in accordance with ORC 121.22G1, the appointment or sorry, not the appointment, uh, the compensation of a public employee or official. So do I have a motion to enter into executive ses session? No motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All right, Mrs. Camphouse? Mrs. Cole? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Ms. Ballard? Yes. Mrs. Rerica? Yes. Okay, the time is 6.52. <clears throat> we are in executive session. I have a motion to adjourn. I motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. 732. Thank you very much.